G'day, mate. I'm Jim. Yeah, yeah. I'm Az. Yeah. Az, how are you? Yeah. Yeah, I heard about you. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Mm. Coming to town, I said, who are the interesting characters in Tipperbara? And they said, go and meet Az. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Az, you, your dad was a, a camel herder here? Yeah, Af he came he out in the 1800s. 1800s? Yeah. Fair dinkum. Because, I mean, this country was opened up by camels, yeah, yeah, you know. They didn't get much recognition, though. No, no, no. This is pre-cars yeah, and everything because yeah. the camels could travel further distances than the horses, huh? Yeah, yeah. And did you do camel herding as well? I did, yeah, when we was younger. I'm just hanging around Gary, so I know a bit about goats, or yeah. Gary at least. What, what, yeah. Do you know a bit about goats as well? Like, what's, yeah. the, what's the difference between a camel's nature and a goat's nature? You know, if a goat, if you knock them about, they... <laughs> Want to do with you? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the same as a camel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be good to them. Well, you know? well, that's the thing. I think humans and dogs yeah. can be ruled by love and fear. That's right. Whereas that's goats right. and camels can only be ruled by love. You that's can't. That's right. We used to have a big goat like this here. Yeah. Like here. Yeah, he's a milking goat. Yeah. But he, he's a big bloke too, isn't he? And as have you been back to Afghanistan at all? No, never. Never been the Pun Punjab. It was. Yeah. No. In those days, it was called Punjab, yeah. Punjabi camp. So yeah, yeah, born, uh, born in Australia, and ne ever left Australia? No, born in Broken Hill. Where's uh, the furthest you've been? Uh, oh, Alice Springs, up in that country. Yeah. I worked up around uh, up the railway line when I was going through Mari to and yeah. that. And there we go, true blue Aussie here. Yeah. yeah. And then I was uh, worked on Anna Creek, yep. a cattle station. And I work mostly on uh, Kidman stations and droving. Are there many other Afghan sort of, you know, sort of ca yeah, camel the, hurt? Yeah, I'm the oldest uh, descendant of all the Afghan cameleers left. Really? Male. Wow. And I've got a sister, she's 90, nearly 94, and she's the oldest female. How old did your dad live to? 90, 97. Wow. <laughs> wow. How, how good is that, eh, Gary? Yeah. I got a lot of descendants down in Port Augusta and up yep. that way at Maree yep. and Broken Hill too. Don't call it Port Augusta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Port Augusta. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't met half of them, mate. Oh. <laughs> how many brothers and sisters you got? I, I had seven brothers and seven sisters and I'm the only boy left and there's only two girls left. Wow, that, yeah. that's a that's a full-on yeah. tribe, isn't it? Yeah. They don't yeah. breed them like they used to. No, no. No. Nah. Uh, Mum, I back then, your dad and, and mum must have just been mad rooters, hey? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he is going on camel steak and camel trip, and every time he come back, he'd leave and mum be pregnant. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> right, either that or the camel, hey? <laughs> <laughs> no, the reckon the camel, no, what did the bloke say? Uh, it's all right to make love to a camel. You've got to go too far to kiss him goodnight. <laughs> You're dead right. Because, oh, I mean, the good thing about rooting a goat is you don't need a stepladder either to get up to them, <laughs> hey? I've never tried it. <laughs> Weirdo. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, because, Gaz, I, I don't have to go far to kiss you. I mean, Australia has changed. The, the inland Australia has changed from yeah, those days. Like, yeah. The cities have just, you know, exploded in populations, but inland it's disappearing a lot, isn't it? No, oh, it is, yeah. It's not like it used to be. When I first came up here, Bob, there was a lot of Aboriginal people here. Yep. And they were real decent, respectable people. So are these, well, there's only a few around here now. Yeah. Uh, but, but you go down and, and they didn't say, oh, this is my country and I want this and all this and that. They were happy. Yeah. But today they're all... So it's sort of like a, there's a lot of discontent being yeah, yeah, being right. created yeah. by. Uh, it's like like there's no I know an old Aboriginal can't think of his name up at Alice Springs, and he said it's not the uh, full blood Aboriginal stirring all this shit up. He says the white man half caste. Yep. And then the Aboriginal, he said, the white man tells the half-caste what to do, and the half-caste tells the Aboriginal, that's what you're going to claim. And the Aboriginal, of course, said they reckon they're ignorant and got no education on that. Yeah. Uh, that they'll do it. And then, then, the, then the white people blame the Aboriginal. Yeah, right, it's okay. Not the bloody Aboriginal. Yeah, well, I suppose it's a bit like the Americans going into the Middle East and yeah. stirring stuff up. Yeah. And then, and then all these extremists get yeah, created, yeah. and then they blame them, and That's they go, right. "Well, there's a chain of yeah. uh, command in this." Yeah, but, but blame poor old Aboriginal. He's not the blame. No, uh, no. I work with Aboriginal. I worked on Nokatunga Station there when, when I first went up that country, 
and I was cooking in a mustering camp, and there was about 16 Aboriginal boys and, well, half caste boys, some of them. Yeah. I think some of the old Afghans might have left the half caste boys there when they <laughs> came through with their teams and that. Well, uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. look at your track record. <laughs> yeah, get the black velvet. And anyhow, um, uh, they had a big dish like that. Yeah. And when you cook a stew or curry like that, you put it in that. They had one spoon between them. Yeah. yeah. And they were there for years, and then later years, uh, um, a bloke came out there. For, he was um, a, what he called a, a, ma a manager's son, and he was Bill Hughes. He's still alive. Yeah, and yeah. They owned Nockatung for years, then they sold to yeah to um, a packer. Yep. Packer bought it, and and I said to him, and so did this other old drover bloke that I worked with for years, old Larry Thompson. Yeah. What about these boys? They've all got this one. One spoon in the dish before them, and they're using all bloody old tin veggie tins and that for panic and that. What about we all get them the right thing? And and Bill used to talk like average. Yeah, right, old boy. He said, I'll fix them up. So, any real educated bloke. Yeah. And so, he ended up within about five or six weeks. Out comes from Thargaminda on the mail. A knife, fork and spoon, a pannikin and a plate for every Aboriginal in it, what I was cooking for. Nice. And, and you know, they boys pre really appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. That yeah. just, just respect. Yeah. 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 And when they came out in later years, uh, the uh, Europeans thought they were doing a good job by taking them all the way to the missions. Yeah. It's the worst thing they ever done. Yeah, yeah. And that, because yeah. at the time, was there much backlash of what they were doing, or was it just totally accepted? No, it wasn't accepted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't accepted. It wasn't even accepted. By I mean, obviously not accepted by the Aboriginals, but was it? Was there much backlash, yeah, backlash what, from the white accept, people? It wasn't accepted by a lot of the white people either. What do you think, I mean, with, with the solution now, with them sort of communities being pushed off the land, do you feel this is the new... Uh, taking the children away, like it's another step from disconnecting them from the land, or is it just... Well... Well, if they didn't take all those children away years ago, they'd have been dead and buried when they were younger. They they were starving. They had there was no nourishment. What they they didn't get one a lot of the stations. They treated them like bloody dogs. Yeah, yeah. and because you, yeah. you weren't allowed to yeah. roam around like before and get your get your food according no, to the season, no, so no. You, you were trapped. And I've had I've had different ones. Uh, look out, mate! You get that in your mouth. I've had different ones claim me as Aboriginal, try to treat me as Aboriginal. Yeah. And we're uh, working for them. And I've had quite a few fall out, especially in Victoria. For your sort of in between cultures, you've got a good viewpoint on the white and, yeah. and the black fella well, culture my, here. My mother came from Ireland. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. So you've got a. Um, yeah, Afghan dad, uh, an Irish... In, in, Indian. I, Indian. Indian. In, yeah, yeah, right. No, they call them Afghans. Oh, they? right, okay. Yeah, yeah back then when... So they... Afghans, Turks, Sikhs, and Indians. Uh, and what other breed? Anyhow, there was five different cultures came to Australia with the camels. Yeah, right. Yeah. And did those five cultures get on well with each yeah. other? Was there a solidarity yeah. between those guys? That's right, yeah. yeah. The only ones that they didn't go on well with was, was the white people when they had camel string teams and that. They didn't have strings, the white blokes. Didn't they? No, uh, they used to have wagons. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they had a different way of riding the camels. Yeah. And you'll probably go, you've, and, and it wasn't as, as good as you guys. No, and they were very cruel with them too. Yeah, right. Them. Yeah, well, yeah. that's it. I mean, um, you, you can't, you can't. You can't work with an animal if you're cruel with them. I mean, right. aside from it being wrong, it's it's kind of stupid. Yeah. So, um, and like when you're saying this guy was treating you like the local Aboriginal, I suppose from your point of view as well, you're going, even if I was Aboriginal, that's just not the way to treat not people. The way to, not the way to treat them. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I didn't believe in it uh, the way they used to treat them years ago, though. Yeah. And, and yet some, some people on some stations used to treat them just like their own. Yeah. Yeah, it's only just a few, see? Yeah. Yeah. So now you're, you've, you, you, you've seen, a, 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 you know, times change where yeah. it's sort of swinging so far the other way yeah. that uh, the, the, the balance has gone different ways. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, um, yeah, yeah basically we're all, it, it's all pretty, it's, all, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, you've seen a fair few of them in the, out 
travelling around. Well, I mean, you just you, know, you just you just take everyone as they come. It doesn't really matter who they are. People say, "Oh, there's no hope of all this and that." They well. Uh, well, it's like saying, what do you think of white people? I mean, I know a fair few yeah. fucking dickheads, and I know a fair few good know. ones. I mean, it does, you know, it's yeah. like, can you can you narrow it down? You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, yeah. so, um, yeah. What well, do you reckon, mate? Yeah, but, it, yeah. and you know, a lot of fun in those days as well. Like, you know, aside from all the racism, like, there's a lot of rules coming in now as well. Oh, yeah. aren't, aren't, aren't and that was all good stockmen too, you know, all horse days them days. Yeah, yeah. But no, no motorbikes in that when I was first roving. It was all horses and and that. And, and uh, as can you, I get the sense from going around the country, like yeah. particularly around the 1900s, that's yeah. when a lot of the country towns yeah. started booming. Often yeah. the biggest building in a country town was the first one built. Still, yeah. you know, and then the. Uh, you know, after the wars, all the yeah. you know servicemen came in and it grew. Was there a sense? I suppose you couldn't really predict then that it would. Hundred years later, it would be such a downfall of the country. I mean, I yeah. suppose there was a sense of these are going to build up into massive cities yeah. and. Well, the way things are today, it's I, I can't follow the what what's going on today with a lot of the countries. Yeah. Like, see, I, I'm looking at the TV the other day and seeing this kid holding a man per, person's head up like that that they, they cut off overseas and that and that that kid was only 12 a year old or something yeah but they had a big black sheet here oh, so it was only on yesterday again yeah and they had it they, they couldn't see its head but you could see the air up here and them sort of things that never happened in our days no nah, no nah. yeah it's i don't know where it's coming from yeah well it's um uh, it's yeah. it's um i don't know where it's coming from either but it, yeah. it's 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 not good is it nah. like, like basically you know, we're all one tribe, yeah, and yeah. Um, and until we work that out, we're just going to trash the joint. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's that's really interesting, as I mean, it's um. Yeah. But where do you carry him in the? Yeah, he just here? he just hops up in the back here, and um, yeah, in the dual cab. Oh, uh, he gets in there. Yeah, and I got him for a case of beer. I do comedy shows at pubs. Yeah. So I got him for a case of beer, and uh, I just, he was just a little fella, and uh, used to be able to put him on my shoulder when he got into trouble. And now he's a big unit, and uh, yeah, he's just my mate, really. How long are you for now? Oh, until the rain stops. So we're going to go down to the pub tonight and do You're it. You on your own? Yeah, it's just me and Gary. Yeah. 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 So, uh... You want to drink a coffee or tea or something? Yeah, yeah, I'll come in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you got married? Uh, I'll be 89 in August. Yeah. Uh, Been married 36 years. Good on you. You had a good run, didn't you? Yeah. You had a good run. 53, you thought I'll pull up stumps, hey? And the, <laughs> and the wife's 63, I think. So, as when you were, you were married, you were 53, and your lovely wife, she was 29, hey? Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> and, um, Couldn't be any happier. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic, hey? So, you were single till you were 53, as? Yes. You were single to your 53 and then you started. No, I didn't know before that. Oh, right, yeah. Didn't last on that. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, when, how old were you when you first got married? About 40, I think. And, like, in those days with relationships as well, especially being a camel herder, um, yeah. you, you're on the road a lot, hey? You sort of basically got to go, you know, yeah, well, darling, I'll, um, I'll see yeah. you in six years. Roving and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Which, um, you know, there's issues now with the fly-in, fly-out miners where you've got yeah. to go for three weeks. But yeah. back in your day, you you were gone for like months at a time, hey? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I mean, it's the same thing um, as I've got, I got a uh, deal with my girlfriend that we, we just promise that yeah. we'll always see each other at least every two years, you know? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. I, and that ca that keeps things going. You have milk and sugar? Oh, just a um, bit of milk, no sugar. And... Um, and as what what brought your father out here, like in the eighteen eighty eight, the eighteen eighties? Yeah. Um, what sort of got him? Was there like was, well, there, was there an ad come to Australia or? No, they they, they wanted to open up the outback and they wanted the uh, camel men. Yep. And they brought the camels and the old fellows out. Well, they were only young fellows then. Yeah. And uh, and they brought them out with the. So what an adventure for your dad. He he didn't see his family again. He just sort of hit the road. 
Yeah. Or hit, one, hit the boat. One brother came out years ago, not at my time. Yeah. One brother came out years ago and seen him and, and went back home again. In, inland Australia's got the biggest wild population of camels in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they're just shooting, shoot, like nothing. Yeah, how, how, do you, how do you feel about, um, yeah, that, the shooting of all the camels in there? Is it, is yeah, sort of... that, well, the shooting is all right, but out of helicopters and that, shooting them, you can go along, I've seen them shooting brumbies and that, but I haven't seen the camel business. I read about it in the paper not long ago, and the yeah. bloke who got the camel farm in Alice Springs, he was going crook about it. Yeah. And he reckoned it's cruelty because he said he'd gone on and seen camels still alive two or three days after, it couldn't move, but still alive. Yeah, right, so you're and saying I've that... I've seen that happen with Brumby's horses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what you're saying is, okay, cull them, yeah. but don't just take pot shots from a plane and piss off yeah. when you've probably just... Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. wounded one. They just wounded so they're just, they're they're just yeah. sitting there, a lot of them are just sitting there bleeding to death. Yeah. If you're going to... Well... We've only got, they only got a waste in here. I reckon it's up, what my opinion, is trying to get as many as they can and as long as they go into the nacre or something and they're doing something with them, yep. instead of wasting it, if they're going to do it that way, why let them do it? That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to kill them, kill them properly. Kill, kill them humanely, yeah. 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 Humanely, that's, that's, yeah. that's it really. Um, it isn't humanely, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, killing humanely, that's a... Uh, it's a pretty dubious term, but uh, is camel meat sort of eaten? I've, I've ate it, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. people around here that they shoot, shoot a camel out here on the stations around close. There's a lot of camels out back here. Yeah. There's camels caught on the way there. Yeah. And then you keep on going around and you see more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and then, then people are worried about getting rid of a lot of them. Yeah. They truck a few way down again, and that, but they don't just go and shoot them on the and leave them there. No, no, no. But they shoot when they use it for meat. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, like even the Aboriginal culture, you don't just go and go around killing animals. It's a waste. No. Well, we've got a, a, a wasteful culture now where we're not using our resources yeah. very smartly. So if you just go around killing shit, it, you know, we're wasting food, we're yeah. wasting meat, and you know, even a lot of the mining, it just ends up in landfill. Yeah. So. Um, another fucking big problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyhow, I'll get this cup, right? Cheers, as this is what this is what the country is about for me. It's a cup of tea and some homemade biscuits. <laughs> Thanks, Viv. Were these yours? No oh, yeah. Viv, what what caught your eye about as all those years ago? His brown eyes. His brown eyes. They're oh. a, bit, a bit watery now, but they were pretty cool. Oh, you still got it as, hey? <laughs> That's great. And were you, were you born here as well? Up this area as well, Viv? No, I come from Bendigo. Bendigo, alright. Big smoke yeah, girl. Big smoke. Yeah. Big slicker. Right. So you picked up the young, the young, hot city slicker chick, eh? What, what, what happened? She had a girlfriend working in the hospital there. Yeah. And the husband was working on the pipe bomb when they put the gas through. Yeah. And the girl said to me, you know, I've got a girlfriend coming up to do the leak work at the hospital. I think you should get on good together. <laughs> well, I said, yeah, well, I've come in on that weekend when she comes. <laughs> yeah. 36 years later, here you are. <laughs> a bit more than 36. Yeah, great. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> nice. It's good, to get a, it's good to get a referral from your friends sometimes. Yeah. Well, there's no, it's made, saved me anyhow. If I was dropped here, I don't think I'd have been much left now. What, you're getting pretty loose, were you? Uh, getting around a bit too much. <laughs> she, <laughs> she settled you down, mate, eh? Yeah. yeah. And how many kids you got? I had two daughters. Yeah. One got killed when she was only six year old in an accident. We, we turned the light support off the next morning in Melbourne. They took her down to Melbourne by plane from where we were. Yeah, it goes, isn't it? Yeah, that's nothing yeah. worse than that, mate. And yeah, you just got to keep going, don't you? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Right. You got to live with it, don't you? We're all in the queue, but you just don't want it to happen that early. That's terrible. Well, there, I'll show you a fifth photo. That's my. Where is he? That's my father there. Yeah. And look how they lift, how they lift them bars of wool on there. That's a big load, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at this. They're, they're loaded. Dude. That, that, that's 
feed, uh, grain, right. sharp or something. Yeah. And um, how long can a camel go? How, what's the longest distance a camel can go without water? I've seen a camel go for 20 odd days without water. This is transport back in those days. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, the railways, well, the towns. Ship, ship, big ship water tanks, look at them. Water tanks, everything. And then... Railway line. And then pretty well over the space of, you know, a few decades, they just became totally obsolete, hey? That's right, yeah. And you sort of wonder whether that's going to happen to our culture right now, where there's, where, you know, like, whether the motor car or the fuel or the engine or um, even the internet or the things that we think are just here forever, mm. where they're going to become obsolete. Well, you look at it, you can't expect the, uh, the earth to keep going the world to keep going what they are, pull all the gas out, oil all, all drawn out from underground? No. It's got to deteriorate one time, doesn't it? Well, the, the whole miner's argument is if you don't like mining, you're a hypocrite because you use our mobile phones, computers, and everything's from mining. But basically what you say, it, it, the world cannot sustain an increasing population just digging stuff out of the earth. That's right. And... Uh, it's not going to last, I don't think, myself. No, and it's... Well, you know, humans have been around for 200,000 years. You, yeah. We can't keep this pace up for another, you know. We can't. There's no way in the wide world. Yeah. And do you think humans are sort of... Um, do you think we, we can stop it? Or do you think there's just a momentum that we're going to have to sort of crash? Stop why they've got men like, like you've got running your show. Yeah. They're not, they don't care what happens uh, as long as the, the money's coming in. Uh, yeah, well, basically, politicians now, they're, yeah. all they're good, all politicians are good for now is just going like this. Yeah. Which, which way is the wind blowing? Yeah. It's coming yeah. out of your ass. The politicians, all they think about is their bloody self. They're not worried about what's going to happen to the world. No, well, they, they'll be dead and gone. Yep. They, they, yeah. They, they'll have their good times and they'll be dead and gone, won't they? <laughs> yep. It's, um, there's no real long-term planning at all. I've never been on the dog. Yeah. Well, none of our family have. Yeah. If we couldn't get out and work and that, well, we'd get a good kick in the ass. Yeah. We'd have to go. Go find yeah. it. Yeah. One family down where we came from, and one bloke there, a oh, big lumpy young fellow and his brother and his, they're all, both from bloody drugged out and all that, uh, could go up the street and buy a packet of cigarettes cost you about $30 at a time and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And they said, oh, what are you going to do? Or the publican said, actually, while well, I was there, but I don't drink or smoke myself now. I used to years ago. Yeah. And what are you going to do now when the abbot takes a doll off you? He said, well, we won't work. I'm not getting up at eight, 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 seven or eight o'clock in the morning to go to work, one of them said. It was uh, not what I can get me pension, uh, me um, check coming in every fortnight. There's yeah. no need to go on the dole if you're active and healthy. Yeah. You can just well, work it out. Yeah, I, I'm, well, I can't get an old age pension because my wife works. But I, if anyone asks me to go out and help on the station do mustering at the student, excuse me, anything like that, I go out here to a place up in the Queensland, a ticket over station, I go up and help them four or five or not as long as I like to stop there. Yeah. Uh, and I don't ask them for anything. Yeah. Uh, they offer it, but I don't ask it. I, I just live in the house there with them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and we go out mustering and, and all that sort of business. Uh, well, uh, if, if you've got no habits, yeah. if, you, uh, if, if, you got, if you don't smoke or drink yeah. and you just eat basic food yeah. and you like a bit of adventure, you yeah. actually don't need all that much, hey? No. So now people go, oh, you know, so and so is like doing it tough, but you never hear, oh, do you hear what happened to Billy starved to death? No. Today, I just feel like the struggle is different to today. Like, say, in the Depression, you obviously had to, you know, you had to, you know, find out where your next feed is yeah. and stuff, but yeah. there, there was a bit of a fire in you. Like, yeah. you're like and now, uh, like, to a certain extent, the struggle is your path, isn't yeah. it? Like, and, and now almost the path's been taken away, the struggle's been taken yeah. away, and like you say, you're just yeah. sitting there accepting handouts yeah. and, and, and saying, yeah, I reckon we should 
bomb these people. Yeah. And I think to a certain extent today, like like you said, the problems with the world, yeah. it, where they go, go off and work, you know, back in the Depression, you, you're doing a pretty honest living, you're, you're doing something pretty practical. Yeah. But a, a lot of the work now is you're pretty well contributing to a machine which is destroying the, the yeah. planet. So there, there's a real... Uh, ambivalence about the whole nature of work as well. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got to work, but am I just am I just adding to the mess here? Yeah, well, not, not, I can't follow them. A lot of them, they don't want to work. Yeah. Do no. I'm going to say, uh, well, I'll get to it. No, while I, while I can go out and do a bit of work, I'll do it. Yeah, and you know, you know, you're coming up to 89, you're still going out there. That's great, and and you, and you love it. And I think you've got to find work that you love too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, ne I'll never stop all I can do. There's my mother and father in Broken Hill. That's going back a fair few That's years. That's your mum and dad, hey? Yeah. That's father. And they met out here? And so, how old was your dad and your mum when they got married? Well, we never dreamed. My mum was only young, I think about 18 or 19 or something. Yeah. And your dad was? He, he was, yeah, I forget how, I wouldn't have a clue now. Yeah, about 20 years old. old be about the same. Bad, 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 yeah, yeah, settled down when you were 50. They and, like the young woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then he knocked out 14 kids with her. Mm. Impressive. All good ones too, they all worked. All, mm. Yeah, all good ones, they all worked. Your father was quite religious? Yeah. What religion? He, he was... Uh, uh, we used to pray to at the mosque and that Muslim and that. Yep. Yeah. And was there was there much tolerance for it, or was it like, oh yeah, you just go, you, or was there sort of there was none? Of, was there this go back to where you came from type stuff now then, or was it? No, oh yeah, no, no, there was none of that then. They just thought it was no. quite interesting. Yeah, and and, and what you got with the. Um, uh, their religion, when they prayed and that, they faced the sun. And then um, when they were praying, you didn't disturb them. Yeah. You disturbed them with that lot of That was it. And when I was younger, we used to go to school and we used to have on a Thursday a uh, scripture. Yeah. A uh, hour every Thursday morning. That was for, not only for for everyone. Mm. And, and then, um, uh, that was a Catholic thing, because my mother was strict Catholic, but that didn't worry my father. He kept his religion and he didn't bother about what... Yeah, what so they, they, they're husband and wife and they've got completely different religions and yeah, they just yeah. do their own thing. Yeah. And then then on the... Um, uh, was it Friday or Saturday, I think it was, not too sure, Friday evening or Saturday, we used to have to go to the mosque and pray the men, not the women, we used to go over there for an hour. On Sunday, Mum would take us all to the Catholic Church up on the hill in Broken Hill. So, and, and how did that affect you, your religious beliefs, growing up in that it environment? Didn't, didn't worry me. Were you, did, you, did you grow up particularly religious one way or the other? No, just go. Yeah, you just, you just turned up to both and went, yeah, oh yeah? just let it go and go with it. Yeah. yeah. Go with the flow, as they say. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That, that's... Uh, that, that, that's, that's beautiful, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I suppose back then you, you couldn't have imagined how all this, you know, the, 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 there's such a, a, a Muslim Christian yeah. issue now. You, like you couldn't have seen that happening back then. There wasn't the, there wasn't the extremism on both sides of religion back then. Uh, 20 years ago, I rode a camel across the Westgate Bridge. 20 years ago, really? Yeah, in Melbourne. And remember old Cliff Young, the old... Yeah, the, yeah, the runner, he, ultra marathoner. He, he, was, he was in it, and he, got, he was alive in them days, and he went across the bridge as well. And what, we had a police guard. So you were the, as you were the last guy to ride a camel across uh, the West Coast Bridge. the only one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to do it now, though. No. Yeah. I, might, I might have a go with Gary, though. Later on, well, what was it, uh, eight, nine, year, ten years ago, I had 21 camels down there where we were. Yeah. And there's uh, eight broken in ones with sad riding saddles. Um, there's eight of them on Campbell Beach, the Cable Beach in Western Australia now. A bloke came over and bought them. And then uh, Chinese... And they were, your, they were your camels? Yeah. 
broken in or saddled with gnaw line. Well, they're the most famous camels in Australia now. Yeah. They're a dromedary, they call them. The right camel is a two-ump. Yep. But they bought a two-ump camel out of here and they couldn't stay in the heat and they died. Really? Yeah. I would have thought the two-hump could have stand it more, but it's the one-hump ones that can go longer. The one-hump ones can go a lot the better. So what are the two-hump ones for? Are they, are they sort of, see, they're good, but just for shorter distances? They still use them over there. I'll see them racing them in them. Yeah, right. They're good for racing, hey? Yeah. Mm. And there's no three-hump camels, are they? No. 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 Two. Yeah. That'd be more like the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, say that again. As you're just, you're just a guy who's obviously enjoying life. And, uh, you know, that's that's what you want, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you get born and, you you know, it's have a go. Well, a doctor came me about six weeks ago out here and test me heart because I take heart tablets every morning, night. And oh, you got it when you got a wife who's 20 years younger than you. Yeah, and she said, uh, you'll be right. Another another 10, 15 years and you yet. <laughs> I was telling my daughter, she said, oh, God, no. <laughs> You'd know, the guys that go really hard on the piss yeah. and, uh, and the smokes, yeah. are, uh, and they, they die early, don't they? Yeah, they go young, yeah. Yeah. You can't live on rum and, and bloody smokes and grog and all that like that and, and expect to go till you're 100 or something. Yeah, so you, you, you know, just about coming to 89, man, you've got a lot, you've got, you, mate, you've, you've got a long time left, it's great, it's looking good, thing, mate. Only thing now would be knees if I get up. Yeah, yeah. As far as anything else goes. And, yeah. And, and every time there was a day over here, even before I left here, I used to always work behind the shoots here. I think I've missed three and 45 years. Yeah. Good record, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So with your knees, you're no longer a rodeo clown as much? No, I just... Go down and work me on the shoots and keep the buck jumpers up for the bloke. Yeah, know, that's it. You, oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to if you don't. Well, get in there and contribute. Yeah. You fall back too quick, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I know an old bloke, and all he does is sit in a chair in front of the, in the winter time in front of the open fire. Yeah. And he's got his wife and everything there, and he's a good old bloke, and he's eighty. Three or something, and he and, and, and he's whinging all the time because he can't get around. And, and well, if you're going to sit in front of the bloody fire all day and that, well, you're not going to get around. You're not going to get around. See? Well, it, you know, you can feel like that in your twenties if you don't move. You know, yeah. like, oh God, you just haven't got the energy. Yeah. I mean, you've basically got to uh, expend energy to get it. Well, the same with the young fellow turn has got that house and dinky there that's we said, boy, should they work? They won't get up before midday in the day, at midday to go get up or anything like that. No. They just sleep all bloody day and then... Yeah. And, and, and uh, they don't go to the pub because they're not allowed to, they're barred. Did you used to smoke? I smoked until... I mean, I'll give it up. 40 years ago. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Gave it up in your, your mid-30s, yeah. Yeah, gave it up 40 years ago. And that was... I only used to roll them. I didn't smoke no cigarettes. But yeah, right. Cigarettes. And of course, uh, back in those days, there was no there was no drugs or... No. Uh, there wasn't even marijuana around no, here, was it? It was no. just it was just tobacco and alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't uh, yeah. the and options they got now. Drug and drugs have got them all hung it down, though, haven't they? Yeah, well, it's... Um, I think, to me, grog and drugs are basically the only way people seem to have control of themselves. Yeah. It's like everything's yeah. so restricted and there's no real incentive and even work is like, am I just contributing yeah. to this mess? Well, you pick the paper up and listen to the news now and they say, uh, and, they, and they go, people, they like, they'll get on the drugs and they murder their wife or bash her up or something like that. And then you get some goody stand up and say, oh, it was only drugs. He didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, you've got to have uh, I mean, responsibility for your actions. Yeah, yeah. He knew, they know what they're bloody doing. And you get these uh, uh, millionaires. You know, we went up to Big Brother's place up in Queensland. 
And his wife took us up and said, look at all these buildings up on the Gold Coast. She said, all two stories. She said, you know, there's only, some of them's only got one person living in them mm. and some's got two. And they're millionaires and they want a bloody pension. Eh? Yeah. And when they were talking about taking the pension off them, holy Jesus, did they put on a bloody turn. Yeah, well, people are, we all are professional whingers now. Yeah, well, of course, they reckon they Oh, why can't we get a pension? You know, we're we're old age and we've worked all our lives, and and I can't follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um. Yeah, here I'm eighty nine, and just because the wife's working, I can't get the pension. Yeah, I get superannuation. Yeah, yeah. Which is only eighty six dollars a fortnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I drank and smoked, that wouldn't even be bloody. Well, like like you say, if if people. You can't drink and smoke and then claim that you're poor. No. Like, it, it, you know, you've got room to move there. You, yeah. know? you can't drink a case of piss and a pack of smokes a day and, no. and you go, oh, I'm a hard done boy. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. One of your family's in Broken Hill and, and the husband was uh, not drug hose in them days, but drunk, you know, blue yeah. Yeah. Uh And, and they, they'd be getting... Uh, um, the 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 doll, the bloke, you know, women would be getting child and down and all that. Yeah. And they'd take up, up that money off and the kids are starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen that happen. Yeah, it's like pouring water into a bucket with a hole yeah, in it. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen kids come to school. That's must be the wife going out. I've seen kids come to school and no... No, no lunch or anything. No lunch, no boots or anything. Yeah. And other kids would bring food in. Yeah. And they'd put it, give it to the teacher. Yeah. And then the teacher sorted it out, but these kids has got nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, that's, that sharing, that stuff doesn't happen either. Like, uh, now we rely on the government to look after each other. That's, that's right. an example where you go, hey, go, let's have a little community yeah. here and sort it out at us. And also... Back in the day, there's fresh produce. A lot of fresh produce was probably grown here as well. I'm guessing. Was that? Well, there was more f fruit and veggies actually grown in town back then. Yeah, a lot of. Or was it all shipped? Was it all still shipped in back then as well? No, well, in them days, nearly every place that I remember, even on these stations, they all had veggie gardens and fruit trees. Mostly oranges and lemons. Yeah. Oranges and lemons, fruit yeah. trees. Yeah. There you go. But you had, you actually had, if you had no money, you, you could actually get your own veggies and fruit and yeah. you had your few chickens and your meat. Yeah. And, you, you know, you could you could raise 14 kids. Yeah. Yeah, they there used to be some beautiful gardens. The big stations and that on the rivers and that, they used to always have Chinese gardeners. Really? Running, yeah. So they were self-sufficient when it comes to food. Yeah, food, yeah. Well, I think that's where the country has really, yeah, yeah. really lost it, yeah. is that self-sufficiency and growing actually yeah. food. Well, I Farmers know, don't have their, eat their own food anymore. No, like I know all these cattle stations, Bullet Down, Nokatunga, Durham Down, Dinaminka, Kidman Station, all those stations on the rivers and that, or not only on the rivers, everywhere, all have their gardener and veggies, and the, the gardener would bring the veggies up to the homestead because they most of the gardens are down on the river. Yeah. And they bring all these veggies up to the homestead and put them there. And wow, have, what a treat. And today, where are they? Well, they're not valued. I mean, uh, why aren't we... Why, why value? Because they can go in and, and buy a carton of bloody peas or, or whatever you like in, in tins. Yeah. Why yeah. Why aren't these gardeners of value anymore? I mean, you yeah. know, all the welfare and the war payments we're putting out, why not give it to these people? And yeah. then... And then towns survive, and you know, people yeah. like me just finding fresh food yeah. going through yeah. is pretty tough these days out in the country. Yeah, it's tough, all right. A lot, a lot of people are getting it tough now. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, yeah, that's the key. Just uh, we need more 
food grown and the more food you, you grow you don't depend on businesses or the government to survive no, no. and it's it's not only a a thing for the earth and better help but to me that's where agriculture s swapped into agribusiness and people started disappearing because it's a labor intensive thing when you actually grow your own food and the yeah. more people you got more women here more children and towns grow but as soon as you swap to an agribusiness yeah. The, the, the people just disappear and you're eating shit food. One time, if uh, a per family had a car, mm. uh, they, were, they were rich, they were, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But now, you've got, you got all these families and you've got mobs of growing ups and mum and dad. Mum and dad's got a car. Yeah. Uh, all the kids got motor cars yeah. and everything like that. Then they wondering why the uh, the bloody uh, the cities are getting congested. Well, it, it is, um, there's there's too much now, and, yeah. and it's like you say, this is not sustainable. Ah. This is this is, yeah. and there's no leadership from the politicians yeah. to do it because I mean, to a certain extent, by the time you actually become. Mm -hmm. A politician by its very nature yeah. you, you're pretty well just good at, at, at working out where the breeze springs so you, you're not any conviction in a prime minister in a any conviction in a politician is it's, it's you're not gonna last well my daughter down in Bendigo she's a steward and a, a judge of the Greyhound Racing yeah and we've got a flat for it down there uh, and there's an old couple not all in another flat just up and she goes and just say what they want on the weekend, yeah. and she just gets a list of them, goes and does all their shopping for them and yeah. all that. Yeah. See? And yet, he got family, and the family don't bloody worry about him. Well, that's it. Where yeah. oh, I, I think we're on the. He's in his, he's, he's in well over. They, he'd be 90 off. That's the thing. We complain about businesses and governments, yeah. but we're not actually looking after ourselves. That's right. So. People go, well, you take away business, government, everything's going to collapse. I think we'll just go back to yeah. looking after each other. They have to. Yeah, well, um, well, speaking of that, I'd better go out and uh, see how my mate Gary's going out there. But as, just great talking to you, mate. And um, I go around doing these videos, and I, I look forward to doing videos with you on all, all my laps around, you know? Yeah. I want to know. We'll have this same discussion in another 20 years, mate. Yeah, yeah, okay. got, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you'll be still around. <laughs> no, we're 110. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, you'll be in your prime, mate. 